Welcome back. We are here looking at the U.S. indices and the big tech stocks in the United States. And this was an absolutely massive day for at least the tech stocks. You can just see Netflix up 17.45%. Google, 6%. Facebook, 3.2%. This is Microsoft, it's 4.22%. Amazon, 4.79%. And Apple is up 348 so big tech stocks did a massive move today, but uh, I think it's actually they yeah, were overbought to be fairly honest. Uh, they just went bananas to be fairly honest, and um, that also shows in the indices because most of the indices now now are way way overstretched, and it is highly expected for these indices to either drop tomorrow or drop on Friday because this move to the upside was enormous but it just can't continue and we'll look into why that is so we'll start by looking at the s&p 500 and as you can see we are within this channel and as you can see now we're getting basically very close to the uh, top of this channel so if we break through this channel then we're heading towards um, 3900 or 4000 Technical indicators are looking very bullish at this point. We are on the edge of being overbought. But if you look here, for example, at the Bollinger Band, we are getting way outside of the Bollinger Band. And last time we did that, we dropped roughly from, from uh, this point, which is at 3,800, all the way down to these lows here, are roughly 3,700. And no, that is not right. That is... We dropped roughly 2.13%. That is true. That was the number. So at this point, do expect this to pull back towards the 20 exponential moving average. We'll probably do it gradually the next few days, something similar to this. But if we break above this, then we're going much higher. And that also means that we'll break out of this channel. But I don't think that is going to be the case now. Um, I think the reason why we basically saw this is because for example, as I showed you, some of these stocks are significantly overbought at this current stage, and that, of course, pressures, pressures these indices much higher. So several people have asked me whether or not we should short these indices. Indices, I never short the indices. Uh, you could probably make the case that it's a good idea, but uh, it has learned me, at least in the past, that it's never, ever a good idea to short these indices. They are basically made in order to go higher, and the best thing to do is basically to wait until it goes back to support and when you see it turning around again then you can basically enter uh, for a buy and not short it because that can go wrong really 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 fast so i'm going to wait until we get down towards this level here that's roughly 3700 that's where i think we're going to or 3750 before we go towards 3900 or even 4000 so let's look at the Dow Jones. So as you can see, we are at the all-time highs, and I really don't think that we are going to break through here. We are on the edge of being overbought. Technical indicators otherwise are turning around, are very bullish, but it just we need basically a pullback towards the 20 exponential, and that's a, a, a roughly a drop of 1.4% before taking out these previous highs. If you manage to take out these previous highs, then we're heading towards uh, 31,500. And that will also mean that we'll be significantly um, overbought here in the RSI. There is the room to the upside here in the Bollinger Band. But at this point, I do not think that we have enough momentum in order to break this previous highs. But if we do, we are going fairly higher. And that only means that the fall will be, will be that much bigger. So I'm waiting for a pullback towards the 20 exponential in order to buy into this. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ gapped higher. And at this point, we are you know, basically trading right underneath 3,004. Uh, well, we're trading at uh, 13,317 at this current stage. And we're basically, well almost in the at the top of this of this channel if you look at the bollinger band for example we are way 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 outside expect a massive pullback from the nasdaq towards the if you get rid of this 
expect a massive pullback from the Nasdaq from this point all the way down to the middle of the bullish band. That's roughly a fall of 3.02%. Um, this, of course, will go higher, but of course, it is very, very overextended. Last time we were outside of the Bollinger Band was over here, and it fell from this point all the way down to the bottom here, roughly 2.5%. Two, two now we are looking at a fall of roughly uh, over 3 well, around 3.3%, 3 3.7%. That's where we are going to fall, and that's where I will start entering for a short, not a buy-in, sorry. Technical indicators still are fairly bullish. RSI is still fairly low, so it may stick around here for a while, but this is guaranteed the fall towards the middle. So let's look at these tech stocks. We can see Apple here has rallied. Uh, we found resistance at these previous levels here. Um, I don't think that Apple is going to go significantly higher at this point. I think we're going to see a pullback in most of these tech stocks tomorrow because they are very, very, um, well, tech stocks in general are very overstretched and overbought. Um, Apple, well, you could make a case that we are going to go higher, but I generally, when you have a rally of this magnitude for, for a day, it usually pull back, it pulls back. A little bit and then it goes higher so target still is uh, 138 technical indicators are turning around uh, stochastic is bullish the rsi is bullish now cci is bullish macd is bearish still and we have broken through the middle here of the bullish band so move towards the top of the bullish band that's also uh, around this area here that's where we're going to find major resistance for this stock so Amazon rallied above the moving averages here. We are most likely going to go towards the top of the bullish band here. That is another 1.57% uh, and the previous size here before we run into major resistance. No interest of basically shorting this. If it falls back towards the 50 moving average, that is again a buying opportunity. So let's look at Microsoft. Microsoft is very stretched at this point. There's a lot of room to the, in the RSI, but because we're so close to the, the top of the bullish band here, it is almost guaranteed that we'll see a pullback towards the middle before going higher. Technical indicators otherwise are looking very bullish. So minor pullback, or not a minor pullback, but a pullback towards the middle of the candlestick of roughly to one and a half percent and then rally from there. So Facebook. So Facebook has made a major rally all the way from the bottom here of 144 to 170. Now we're running into resistance. There is still a lot of room to the upside. So out of all of these tech stocks that we are analyzing here, uh, Facebook is most likely the one that is, uh, it has been battered basically the last few weeks uh, together with, with uh, with uh, Twitter, Facebook has basically been battered. So we are rallying. If we manage to break through the 50 moving average, that basically means that we're heading towards these highs here of roughly 293 or 298. There's a lot of room to the upside. RSI is only at 44. So this is a um, stock that it is most likely going to go, go significantly higher. So Tesla. So. It is not strange that nobody's buying Tesla when everything else is just rallying. So Tesla has been rallying for quite a while. We basically broke out here, and this is a move of roughly 109%. At the moment, we're just trading sideways, and usually what happens is that we run into the 50, 20 exponential moving average here, and then it takes off even more. So we are significantly overbought. We need a breakdown, but... This is Tesla. People are not willing to short this or sell it or so on. So there is not a lot of pressure to the downside. Technical indicators are fairly bullish still. Stochastic is turning around here, showing signs of life. But a pullback towards the middle of the bullish band of roughly 11.3%, that would be actually really good for this stock because then it uh, the RSI would come down and it would be a, a possible re-entry. So Google gapped up, rallied. Um, there is not a lot of room to the upside. 
we are significantly outside here in the Bollinger Band. Uh, so I'll pull back from here towards the middle of the Bollinger Band. That's roughly 6.9%. That should be expected for, for the uh, next few days for Google stock. But let's look at Netflix. So this was really, really, really surprising. We are up 17 point, nearly 5%. So we gapped up roughly, roughly 11.9%. And then we rallied another roughly 5%. We are really, really, really overstretched here in the, in the, in the, in the Bollinger Band. So shorting Netflix at this point, um, uh, that is most likely what people will be doing at the end of the US session. Um, and this will most likely fall towards the bottom, uh, the middle of the bullion band, and that's roughly 12% before this it goes even higher. So the RSI is still at 64. Start, uh, other technical indicators are looking really, really bullish, but um, this is just not sustainable. Uh, last time we were outside of the bullion band here, it broke down also here, also here, um, the same goes for here. This was a fall of roughly, roughly 19%. So yes, we have seen this before, but it always becomes really, really, really ugly afterwards. So hope you find this helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing. Hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over Patreon. The link is down below. Good luck and thank you very much.